Muharram. In the past years, I used to have this kind of routine where I would definitely talk about you know, the differences that we find between Sunnis and Shias. Uh, there's this one year, I believe, a couple of years ago, when I discussed the whole incident of the, of the massacre of Karbala. And then last year, we spoke about Umar anhu. But tonight's discussion is something that I have done before. I don't know if I ever get a chance to do this discussion again with all of you. So, inshallah, I will try to explain it as much as I can. But today's discussion is totally going to be academic. It's not going to be emotional discussion. It's not going to be something that I will be taking Sunni's side and I will be bashing Shias here. Uh, that's not my uh, agenda here today. That's not my concern here today. Uh, my concern is to let you know that the differences that exist between Sunnis or Shias or the differences that exist originally existed between the companions of Rasulullah and the family of Rasulullah they had nothing to do with their Iman, they had nothing to do with their belief or Ittaqar. It was a political kind of debate, it was a political kind of difference that happened at that time. And when it happened, it happened and afterwards there was no differences between them. They had mutual love for each other. And today, when we take the name of Ahlul Bayt, people consider us Shias. When we take the name of Sahaba, they consider us Sunnis. And they try to make this kind of division, which I don't actually understand. So inshallah, after tonight's discussion, which is not going to be longer than 10 to 15 minutes, hopefully you will be able to understand what kind of love uh, these companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had with the family of Rasulullah. What kind of love the family of Rasulullah that we call Ahlul Bayt had with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One small thing as a side note, I remember the first time when I delivered a khutbah here, a Jum'ah khutbah here in this masjid. And you know, we have this routine that we deliver a khutbah in Arabic language because we consider it a part of Salah. So you can deliver a speech in English and you'll do whatever you want to, but when it comes to the khutbah that you deliver just before your Salah, it should be in Arabic language called Hanafis. I delivered that khutbah, and in Pakistan we used to have this kind of routine. I never never led any prayer in Pakistan, by the way. This was my first time I was leading the prayer. So I copied that traditional khutbah that we deliver in Pakistan in Arabic. And in that Arabic khutbah, towards the end, we send salutations upon Rasulullah and the companions and the family of Rasulullah I remember very distinctly, when I finished my khutbah, I came down from my pulpit, a brother came up to me, I don't remember his face anymore, but he came up to me and very politely he asked me, brother, are you from Shiri school of thought? And the, re and the reason why he asked me is because in that khutbah I discussed or I mentioned the hadith about Abbas and I mentioned the fadilat of Hassan Hussain and all of a sudden people get insecure when you talk about the family of Rasulullah somehow they start associating you with Shiism when do you start more talking about the Sahaba of Rasulullah they start associating you with Sunnism even though they both are the families and the companions of Rasulullah we should have love for both of them but anyways you know, sometimes people believe and they get confused that Abu Bakr, Umar, and Usman, they wronged Ali radiallahu ta'ala They wronged the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They oppressed them. You know, let me ask you a very simple, a very logical kind of question. Mashallah, you people are more intelligent than I. If somebody oppresses you, what kind of attitude you should have towards that person? Should you love that person, respect that person, envy that person, or should you hate that person? Yeah. If somebody oppresses me, he wrongs me, I have something and he takes it away from me. Am I going to respect him? Am I going to love him? Or am I going to hate him? Absolutely I'm going to hate him. And the people you hate, one thing that you would definitely never do about them, one thing that you will never ever do, is that you name your children after those people you hate. Never ever, because you hate them. They oppressed you, so you hate them. So one thing that you will definitely never ever do is to name your children after these people that you hate, right? And all the references that I'm giving you right now, by the way, all the references, if you need the names of the books, if you need these references, I will give it to all of you. I don't have time to mention each and every reference, but most of my references is from Hiyat al Mullah Baqi Majlisi, and he's a Shi'i Imam, he's not a Sunni Imam. He's a Shi'i Imam, he's not a Sunni Imam. Mullah Baqi Majlisi, write it down, his book Hiyat al Qulub, that's my references are from. Hazrat had 14 sons, two we all know, Hassanan. Hussain. Three he named after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad Aswad, Muhammad Awsat, Muhammad Akbar. Two and three, five. One he named Abdullah, one he named Ubaidullah. Five and two, seven. Four he named after his own family members. Ja'far, Aoun, Yahya, and Abbas. Seven plus four, eleven. How many left? Three. One he named Abu Bakr, one he named Umar, one he named Usman. So if he felt that these people have wronged me, 
or they have wronged at least the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why would he name his children after them? And these three people that I'm telling you about, Abu Bakr bin Ali, Umar bin Ali, Rasman bin Abi Ali, three of them, they were with Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu when he was martyred in the battle of Karbala. They were with him. And then Hassan Hussein, uh, then Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he grew up, Allah blessed him with sons. One he named Abu Bakr, one he named Abdullah, one he named Umar. So Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu had sons by the name of Abu Bakr and Umar. When Hussein grew up, Allah blessed him with sons. One he named Abu Bakr, one he named Umar. You know these 11 Imams, I've written down their names here. We believe in these Imams. They're not just their Imams, we also believe in these Imams as well. So they believe that Ali radiallahu ta'ala is their first Imam. Hassan is their second Imam. Hussein is their third Imam. Fourth Imam is Ali bin Hussein. This is Ali, but he's the son of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala Ali bin Hussein. He's also known as Zainul Abideen. Probably you have heard this name before, yes, Zainul yeah. Abideen. Yes. He had a son, and his son's, uh, and his name was uh, Muhammad, Imam Muhammad Baqir. Imam Muhammad Baqir is their fourth Imam. Uh, sorry, fifth Imam. And then his son, Ja'far. Ja'far al-Sadiq is a central figure in Shi'i teachings. Their fiqh is known as fiqh al Just like we have fiqh Hanfi, fiqh Shafi, fiqh Hanbali, fiqh Maliki, their fiqh is also known as fiqh al Because their fiqh is based on the teachings of this person. In Abu Hanifa, he studied under this person. He studied under this person, the great grandson of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he is considered to be one of the most famous scholars, Muhaddisin, one of the most famous fuqaha in Medina. And he died three years before the death of <coughs> Imam Hanifa. Imam Hanifa died in 150 Hijrah, and Imam Muhammad, Imam Ja'far Sadiq, he died in 147 Hijrah. Alam Hashem Sadeen who is a great scholar, Sunni scholar, he mentioned in his book that this person is considered to be the, one of the greatest muhaddis in his time, one of the greatest muhaddis in Medina, Imam Ja'far Sadiq. Then his son, uh, Musa, Kazim, uh, Musa Kazim, yeah, his son Musa Kazim, he was their seventh Imam. And then his son Ali Radha, his son Muhammad Taqi, his son Ali Naki, his son Hassan Asri, and finally Imam Mahdi, who they believed he was management, he was a young boy. These 12 Imams. Hazrat Ali Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu had sons by the name of Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman. Hassan Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu had sons by the name of Abu Bakr and Umar. Hussain Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu had sons by the name of Abu Bakr and Umar. Musa Kazim. Musa Kazim. Sorry, Ali bin Hussain first, before Musa Kazim. Ali bin Hussain had sons by the name of Umar and Usman. And finally, Musa Kazim had sons by the name of Abu Bakr and Umar. So that's five of their 12 Imams who named their children after Abu Bakr, Umar, and Usman. Four of their Imams. I'm saying their Imam, please don't take it as an offense. They are our Imam. We respect them as Imams, as scholars of Islam, as pious people, as the descendant of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they say they are their Imam. Five of their Imam named their children after Abu Bakr, Umar, and Usman. One another person that some people don't like is Aisha, Udi Allah ta'ala. You know, if you look on YouTube, today I was looking on YouTube, and it, it amazes me and it hurts me as well. You will find many, many videos accusing Aisha, Udi Allah ta'ala, that she actually poisoned Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. the reference that I'm giving you in his book, in Hayat al all of this information that I'm giving you is from his book. In his book, he has already, he also mentioned that when the 12th Imam, Imam Mahdi, when he will come back, he will go to the graveyard, he will resurrect, or he will raise Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, and he will lash her for taking part in the battle against Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha. That's what they believe for. Anyway, they don't like Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Some people don't like Aisha radiallahu ta'ala Again, the same formula, the same principle. If Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha had wronged them, that they should definitely not name their daughters after Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. I told you, Imam Jafar Sadiq, the main and central figure in their teaching, he had a daughter by the name of Aisha. His granddaughter, Musa mm -hmm. Qasim's daughter, his granddaughter Musa Qasim, her name was Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Her name was Aisha. And then Ali Raza had, Ali Raza had a daughter by the name of Aisha. And then Ali Naqi had a daughter by the name of Aisha. The four of their imams, they are naming their daughter Aisha. So again, if she had a sore place in their heart, if they hated her, if they had differences of opinion with her, what would they name their daughters after Aisha? 
The fact that their imams are naming their daughter Aisha, and it's mentioned in their books, again and again I'm telling you, it's mentioned in their books, the fact that they are naming their daughter Aisha, it shows that they respected this order, they respected this lady, they look up to her. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu himself, after the Battle of Jamal, famous Battle of Jamal, after the Battle of Jamal, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu himself, he said, وَلَهَا بَعْدُهُ حُرْمَتُهَا الْأُولَى He said, what happened has happened. After that, she deserved the same respect as she has before this battle. She is our mother, she deserves our respect, she deserves our love, and she deserves our obedience. And we have the same kind of respect for Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha, he respected Aisha. His, his kids continued respecting Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. The imam, the other imams, they respected Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. You know, the woman that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved the most, Abu Bakr, even if you think about it logically, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu gave his daughter to Rasulullah. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu gave his daughter to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet accepted Aisha and Hafsa in his nikah. So what do you think? Are they mu'minat or munafiqat? If Prophet is accepting them in his nikah. They are proper mu'minat. They are not just mu'minat. They are ummahat mu'mini. They are our mothers. They are the mothers of believers. Prophet endorses their iman through his nikah. And Allah endorses their iman. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam opportunity and when his own daughter Aisha radiallahu, uh, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha was ready for marriage, then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his daughter to whom? Ali 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 Just to wake you up, that's why I need to ask you these questions. I know the intellectual debate, the academic one can be really boring, but it's important. The information is very, very important. He gave his daughter to whom? Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha gave his daughter to whom? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his daughter to whom? Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu completed this circle by giving his daughter to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umm Kulsum. Now a lot of people say that this was a different Umm Kulsum. The Umm Kulsum that was married to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, she was not the daughter of Ali and Fatima radiallahu Because in, in that day, during those days, back in the day, Umm Kulsum was a very common name. Prophet Muhammad had a daughter by the name of Umm Kulsum. Uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu had a daughter by the name of Umay Kulsum. Abu Bakr had a daughter by the name of Umay Kulsum. Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his son Abdullah had a daughter by the name of Umay Kulsum. So Umay Kulsum was a very common name. The daughter that was married to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a different one. She was not the daughter. She was not the Umay Kulsum who was the daughter of Ali and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. But the reality is that she was the daughter of Fatima and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom, he knew that the time will come when people will say things about Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That Umar was like this, Umar was like that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to put an assurance policy in place so nobody in their right frame of mind can say anything against Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And it is mentioned again in the same book that I'm giving you the reference. In the same book, it is mentioned, the narration is mentioned that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went up to uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he said that I, if you allow me, then I want to have an honor of marrying your daughter Umm Kulsum. Because I have heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling me that on the day of judgment, all relationships will become invalid except my relationship. And I already have a relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through my daughter. But I want to strengthen this relationship. So if you allow me, if you give me an honor of marrying your daughter. And Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that I was thinking of marrying my daughter to my nephew, Abdullah bin Ja'far. Ja'far radiallahu ta'ala anhu was Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu's elder brother and he died in the battle of Mauta against Romans. He had a son, a very nice, a very nice, pious and generous man, Abdullah bin Ja'far. And he said, I want my daughter to marry him. He said, okay. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, it's okay. He's a nice man, but I think I deserve more. So Hadith Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu agreed and then the daughter of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha was given to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They agreed to it. And Hassan and Hussain by that time they were young men and they agreed to it. So three of their imam they are agreeing to the marriage. Ali, Hassan and Hussain they are agreeing to the marriage of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu with the daughter of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and with the sisters of Hassan and Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now you tell me you are intelligent people if they really feel that Umar is a munafiq why would they give their daughter to Rasulullah to Umar radiallahu ta'ala? Why would they give their sister to Umar radiallahu ta'ala? So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu's iman was endorsed through this nikah. Through this nikah. And finally, one last one and then I'm going to end inshallah. I told you about this person, right? Jafar Sadiq. Their fiqh is known as what? Fiqh Jafir. Just keep this point in your mind. 
Just like Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu spent his entire money on Rasulullah, just like Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu gave his own daughter to Rasulullah, the descendants of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu carried on giving their daughters to the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And just like Hazrat Umar, uh, uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave his own two daughters to whom? Usman. 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 Prophet Muhammad gave his own two daughters yes. to Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Similarly, the descendants of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued giving their daughters to the family of Usman I need to write some names here so that you don't get confused. Hussein, Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu had he had two daughters Umme Hussein and Umme Kalsum. Sorry, Umm Qasim, not Umm Kulsum. Umm Qasim. Hussein of the Allah Taala Anhu had two daughters. Fatima and Sakina. Fatima and Sakina. Abu Bakr has Hassan Zi Allah Ta'ala and his daughter Umm Hussain and Umm Qasim. Umm Qasim was married to one of the great grandsons of Usman Zi Allah Ta'ala. But the, but the most interesting part is the daughters of Hussain Zi Allah Ta'ala. The daughter of Hussain Zi Allah Ta'ala, Fatima, is married to or was married to Abdullah bin Amr bin Usman. I'm going to write this name in Arabic because in English it's going to be wrong. Abdullah bin Amr bin Osman, the grandson, the grandson of Osman of the Allah Taala. Sakina initially she was in the Battle of Karbala, but she survived in the Battle of Karbala. So she, initially she was married to Zaid bin Amr bin Osman. The grandson of Usman radiallahu ta'ala. Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu had another son by the name of Aban. And Aban, you know who was he married to? He was married to the Umm Kalsum, who is the granddaughter of Jafar. Remember I told you the, grand, the, the elder brother of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Jafar, he had a son by the name of Abdullah, Abdullah bin Jafar. He had a daughter by the name of Umm Kalsum. And Aban, has Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu's own son Aban was married to him. And Aban had a son Marwan, and again he was married to one of the descendants of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the family of Rasulullah, the family of Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, continued giving their daughters. The family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued giving their daughters to Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Final point, and then I'm done. Imam Jafar Sadiq. Remember Imam Jafar Sadiq? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu had three sons. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu had three sons: Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, and Muhammad. Abdul Rahman was a Sahabi. His son was a Sahabi as well. Abdul Rahman had a daughter by the name of Hafsa. Hafsa was one of the wives of Hassan of the Allah. <coughs> Abdul Rahman had another daughter by the name of Asma. Now, another son of Abu Bakr Allah, whose name is Muhammad. Abu Bakr had three sons, right? Muhammad, Abdullah, and Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman had a daughter. Her name is Asma. Abdul Rahman's daughter name is Asma. And Abdul Rahman, uh, Muhammad, who is another son of Abu Bakr, عنه, his son's name is Qasim. Qasim is married to Asma. When Qasim is married to Asma, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a daughter. Her name is Umm Farwa. Qasim is married to Asma, and they have a daughter, and her name is Umm Farwa. And Umm Farwa is the mother of Imam Jafar Sadiq. Umm Farwa is the mother of Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq. He used to say that Abu Bakr is my father from two sources. He used to say Abu Bakr gave me birth twice. One from my father's side and one from my mother's side. From my father's side, Qasim bin Muhammad bin... Muhammad is the son of whom? 
Abu Bakar. From father's side, Qasim bin Muhammad bin Abu Bakar. From mother's side, Umm Farwa bint Asma bint Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakar. The point that I'm trying to make here is that if they didn't have brotherly relationship with each other, if they didn't have fatherly relationship, why would they give their daughters to each other? Why would they name their children after them? The fact that they give their own daughters to the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the fact that they name their children after Abu Bakr, Usman, and Aisha, and Umar radiallahu it shows that they have mutual respect for each other. So don't get into these kinds of things. Yes, political differences happened. Battle happened. War happened. jang e happened. All of these things. But they were political differences. It doesn't mean that they hated each other because of these differences. When these political differences were over, they have mutual respect for each other. So this is what we need to understand. What was the story? What was it? It was it happened a long time ago. But as long as you have this kind of picture in your mind that they named their children after Abu Bakr Umar and Usman and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, they gave their daughters to each other, they were married into each other, then who in the right state of mind can think that they have any kind of animosity against each other? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant understanding. If you have any kind of question, you have more than welcome to ask. Inshallah, I'm gonna put it on YouTube as well. So that anytime you get any kind of confusion or get any kind of argument or debate, you can go back and refer to this lecture and hopefully this will help you in the future as well.